The Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy Ohane, has called for the immediate suspension of the plans by the Speaker of the Niger State's House of Assembly, Abdul Malik Dalindaji, to give out 100 female orphans out in marriage. Addressing journalists in Abuja on Monday, the Women Affairs Minister promised to carry out thorough investigation to unravel circumstances surrounding the planned marriage. Of the Niger State House of Assembly, Abdul Malik Sarkin Daji has said the gesture was done with the intention of ameliorating the sufferings of the poor girls who lost their parents to terrorist attacks in Marika local government area of Niger State. But the Women Affairs Minister is not convinced and is calling for more explanations on how giving out the girls in marriage translates to empowerment that improves their living condition. If you intend to help these children, help them in a way to be economically beneficial to them, or for any reason they must get married, because if they decide to get married, I have no right as, as a, a minister to stop them. But I must carry out investigation and make sure that they actually want to get married before you can give them out. Ujo Kennedy Ohanenye is therefore asking that the said marriage be put on hold until the ministry is able to unravel the circumstances behind the planned union and address basic marital issues, including the age and consent of the girls. And I have filed a case of in for injunction to stop him from whatever he's planning to do on the 24th until such a time a thorough investigation is carried out on those girls, find out whether they gave their consent, find out their ages, find out the people marrying them, who are they? Are they very old men that will probably tomorrow kill these girls out of hatred because there's no love or anything between them? These are some of the things that must be found out. The Minister of Women Affairs says the ministry will equally embark on empowerment and skill acquisition programs for the female orphans in the bid to address their plight. Kedonojo Okoliko, AIT News, Abuja. The Speaker, Niger State House of Assembly, Abdul Malik Sarikin Daji, has told the Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy, that they will meet in court over the petition to the Inspector General of Police, Kaede Betokun, to stop the planned marriage of sponsorship of 100 girls in his constituency. Sarikin Daji, while reacting to the letter, described the action of the Minister as unfortunate saying that having been wrongly informed about the development, one is to consult widely before taking a stance, especially as it relates to religious and cultural beliefs of others. According to the Speaker, the marriage sponsorship initiative is not part of his constituency project, but a way to alleviate the hardship and expenses incurred by some parents of the girls as a result of terrorism. He added that the traditional religious leaders of Mariga were the ones who handled the plans while he provides support for the ceremony. But with the latest development by the Minister of Women Affairs petitioning him with court injunctions, the marriage will hold as planned and only his initial absence to grace the occasion as requested by the organizers will be felt as he will not withdraw his initial financial support. Sarkin Daji further admonished the minister to always consult widely before going to the press, maintaining that none of the girls are underage. All right, joining us uh, in the studio at this moment is the Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy Ohaneye. Good to have you join us on the news hour. Thank you. All right, um, the developments in Niger State are uh, eliciting reactions here and there. Mm -hmm. The Speaker of the State Assembly is saying that these girls, you know, were not forced into the planned uh, marriage. What preliminary reports is your ministry getting since this news broke? Thank you so much. Most times, I don't just come into any case. When my children cry, I come. And when I come there, I fight for their rights. That is my duty. I just don't hear anything. I just walk into it. And when I heard and I got the petition that I did, I made some calls. And I've been following up through the SSA to Mr. President of that community. I've been consulting. And I found out that even some of those girls, some are 13 years, I have evidence. I just didn't walk into this case just like that. But the important thing to note is that I don't just walk in without being called upon by my children. And I have to do my duties. 
Yes, when he mentioned in a video that he's going to withdraw, I knew the plan. I'm not a kid. I knew they had a plan for me to probably come down, get off the court, and they were going to do what they needed to do. And by that time I come back again, it's late. So I'm still going ahead with my court matter. The case is still going on. We'll meet in court, like he said. I don't really have much to say to him. I'm not having a personal beefing with him. What I'm doing is that I, I'm, I'm trying to protect the children, protect their rights, and allow them to breathe, like Mr. President said. Allow the poor to breathe. Well, in, the, in, the, in, the press, the, in the press briefing you had yes. you know, earlier today, you said you were going to investigate this matter. Yes. Now, shouldn't the investigation, you know, have been... Shouldn't you have concluded the investigation before proceeding with the uh, legal action? There's no time. On the 24th, they have a date for this particular thing. And if I fold my hands and said I'm investigating like I am doing now without getting an, a, a, a formal injunction to stop them from that until the investigation is done, that will mess up everything I'm planning. Okay, but um, ma'am, I wanted to ask you, we have spoken to Abdul Malik Sarikin Daji. We have interviewed him on Sunday. It was quite mm -hmm. recent. And then he has, we've asked him the ages of those girls. And then he told that those girls were between the ages of 18 and 24, which according to the Islamic laws and their tradition, they are allowed to be married. Have you tried to find out the ages of those girls? And then if the girls who are underage, maybe can think of um, stepping them aside from getting marriage than the ones who are of the age of marriage you allow them so that it does not contradict their religion and their culture thank you if I had not done that I wouldn't have gone to court I will start saying here what my evidences are that's not what I will expose here when we meet in court we iron it out the most important thing is that I have the right if a petition is written to me to ask for further investigation and I intend to take that investigation to the later. I'm going to do everything. Even if the child says, uh, I'm 13, and they're saying she's 18, if he ends up doing bone marrow tests to confirm the age, I'm ready to go to that extent. These children are orphans. They have no voice. They have no uh, body to speak for them. So I am there as the Minister of Women Affairs to speak for them, because every child belongs to the state. Honorable Minister, you know, what would perhaps, you know, make a lady of 18, 20, uh, 13, as the case may be, opt for marriage in contemporary times, you know, could be poverty. Definitely. If they knew better, if they were empowered, perhaps they would have also opted for something better. Definitely. Perhaps furthering their education. What is the government at the center doing in partnership with state governments to address the burden of widespread poverty in this country. Thank you. Since we came into office, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we've changed the scenario to a very high extent. Before I came to Minister of Women Affairs, they usually do just programs. They do programs for girls, they do programs for children, and stuff like that. And so much money were being put into all this. When I came in, I stopped any issue of doing any program without empowerment. You can't tell me you're calling for a meeting for advocacy and you spend something like 250 million to just do advocacy while the people you are advocating for are, are, are dying of hunger. So I put a stop to it. It almost caused problems the other time when they were like, why, why do you say you're doing program and you went to uh, get uh, procure machines to assist these people? I had to go to ICPC to explain myself. We can't continue program when women are dying. So since I came in, I've supplied sustainable empowerment machines to 15 states across the nation. And I shared it by geopolitical zones and made it like that. People in the north, I gave them rice milling machine, which comprised of uh, um, the parboiling machine, the stoning, the chaffing, and cleaning. And there's some sewing machines, because I want to start the uh, uh, ready to wear Africanized Western clothing to be sold by women affairs across the nation. Then if you go to the south, I have given them a uh, Gary processing machine, cassava processing machine, even the ones that fries, those that fry and all that. I've done Thank that. You so much, I'm ready to empower these children. I have the capacity to empower. I have the capacity from that ministry to take them to school if they say they don't want to marry. 
But I won't force them. Okay, if ma. they decided it's okay, but if they're underaged, I'm going to fight it to the later. Thank I'm you sorry so much, to say ma. This. The Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy Ohane. Thank you so much for joining us on the news hour and Claire making your points clear to Nigerians. Thank, Thank you. you so much.